of professionals. Joining me to talk about all this, Melissa Bryant, an Army veteran who's the chief policy officer for the group Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, and NBC military analyst General Barry McCaffrey, retired four-star general and former National Security Council member. It's good to see both of you. Melissa, the Military Times reports that last year, Congress passed nine significant pieces of veterans-themed legislation, including new accountability rules for department employees, an overhaul of how veterans benefit appeals cases are handled. Shulkin wrote in his op-ed today that he's proud of what he's accomplished at the VA. You know Shulkin, you've met with him. Do you think his firing was called for? Unfortunately, I think the writing's been on the wall for some time. There are forces that have been undermining him at the VA. It is a massive bureaucracy. All of the problems that you uh, covered in the top of the segment uh, exist for the uh, nominee, for uh, the president's nominee to handle. But um, Is Dr. Jackson the person to take it on? Uh, you know, that, that remains to be seen. I mean, he's obviously has an exemplary medical uh, profession or, or, excuse me, a military career, but it remains to be seen of whether he can handle the massive bureaucracy of the VA. Yeah, that's a, I mean, it's a daunting task for anybody, General. Uh, Jackson is a Navy Rear Admiral. He served President George W. Bush, Obama, Trump. He led an emergency medical unit in Iraq, so he knows what it's like to be out there. But is he qualified to run the second largest department in the U.S. government? Well, it's certainly a highly unusual nomination. But look, you know, you look at this <clears throat> uh, doctor's background. He's been the honor of everything he did in his entire life. He's been involved in Navy special ops. He's been deployed in combat. Uh, he spent 12 years in the White House, and he's got the confidence of the president. Those are all the good news. The bad news is the biggest unit he managed was the 40-some-odd medical people in the White House. And that VA system, which, by the way, if you're in the VA system, like my brother-in-law, 101st Airborne Combat Veteran, they love it. It's great medical care. But it's a giant, bloated, needs to be modernized. Some aspects of it have got to be outsourced. You've got to let veterans, particularly in rural areas, go see uh, the, the civilian uh, health care providers. So he's got his work cut out for him. I hope they get him a good chief of staff and some competent people and don't politicize the agency. Yeah, let's talk about that, it's sort of what you alluded to, and that's, I think, going to be what we're going to hear a lot about. This is a, a position that Congress is going to look at, and at the heart of the questioning, I think, will be that fight over whether to privatize the department. The, the president has said there should be at least some more privatization, but let me play for you what Richard Blumenthal had to say about this this morning on MSNBC. It's a little bit like asking someone who's never climbed a mountain to begin with Mount Everest. The VA is the Mount Everest of public management, both in significance. It deals with our nation's heroes. There is no excuse for failing to meet the highest standards, but also in terms of difficulty because it is a sprawling bureaucracy. Melissa, where does your organization stand on privatization? We are 100% opposed to privatization. Uh, our members are definitely split in the performance of the VA. As the general stated, most of the members that of, of members of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, when they get into the VA, they're very satisfied with the care that they receive. But there are massive access barriers to care. Uh, it really is a challenge in getting those veterans the care that they need. The 20 suicides by day uh, is obviously a sobering statistic that we deal with day in and day out. We want to see that improved upon. And so seeing, uh, you know, whether uh, Admiral Jackson is up to the challenge of this, again, that just remains to be seen. Yeah, I mean, supporters of privatization, General, say, and, and you, you kind of alluded to this, you talked about people who live in rural areas, people who want to have choice. They say the current system hasn't worked. Uh, that you've got to try something different, that at least uh, privatization will give veterans more options, better access to care. But is that the, the only answer here? No, I mean, you also got to, we had some real integrity problems in the VA also. I mean, Rick Shinseki, the former chief staff of the Army, had a real problem because they weren't telling him what was going on. Look, at the end of the day, the VA is a national treasure. There's no question. You don't want to do away with it. But I do believe, like the military retirees from active duty, we have an option of either going to a military active duty hospital or to a civilian clinic. And I would prefer to go to Walter Reed rather than anywhere in the country. But having said that, 
you know, we do have access to the uh, domestic health care system. I think our veterans need the same thing. There are just too many of them, and we've got to right-size the organization. Congress is a real impediment to sensible management. They fight over keeping their three hospitals in the same city. Uh, so there's just got to be some rational approach. Now, by the way, poor Rear Admiral Jackson, Johnson, who's, who looks like a spectacular naval officer, it's not just the health care system. That's veterans' benefit. Mm -hmm. The nation's incredibly generous to the veterans. And those programs are Byzantine. He's supposed to be running 131 cemeteries, for gosh sakes. So he's got a real challenge coming up. Uh, we admire his youth and energy and his willingness to take it on. General Barry McCaffrey, Melissa Bryant, thanks to both of you. This is